I think one thing one should say at the start is that the word secularization is itself a theoretical term and has meant many different things for different people. I think for most people it, it means one of two things. One is the way in which religious institutions lose their authority and even some of their functions in society, which are taken over by civic powers. Um, that would be one sense of secularization. A, a, a second would be that um, belief in the teachings of a particular church, for example, which might have power in society, um, those beliefs become less credible over time. And I think with that second sense, the sciences do seem to be particularly relevant. Uh, relevant in the sense that I think for many people there is a conflict between science and religion, which in their mind may well be perceived to have taken place over centuries, some kind of inevitable conflict between the claims of a scientific community and the claims of a church and its representatives. Um, so, for example, uh, the, the Galileo affair is very well known. Uh, it's a case where new science, the idea that the earth moves, seems to contradict scripture. Particularly, actually, uh, Joshua's command to the sun to stand still. And if you take that text, literally, it implies the sun must be moving um, already, not the earth. And so it looks superficially, at least, as if there is a conflict between the astronomy and the authority of scripture. That would be one example. Um, in the 19th century, the theory of evolution of Charles Darwin uh, it was very attractive to secular thinkers who wished to attack religion because they could claim that somehow the science had overthrown the power and the authority of the church. So I think that's one respect in which the science seems to be a driving force for change. Um, I think actually one of the other uh, rather interesting things to look at is the way that the practice of science changed over the, the centuries. And science itself became a more secular kind of activity. By that, I mean that the idea was in looking for a scientific explanation, you would look for a natural explanation. You didn't need to invoke some kind of supernatural power to explain whatever the phenomenon was. And I think it seems very plausible to argue that as science advanced, as we became more familiar with the laws of nature, as, as they were often called, um, somehow the importance attached to the supernatural gradually erodes, gradually disappears. So Charles Darwin, for example, in the middle years of the 19th century, could say the more we know about the fixed laws of nature, the more incredible do miraculous events become. Mm. So that would be a very clear example, I think, where the more we know in science, um, the weaker some of the authority claims of the churches would appear to be. Mm. So I hope that gives some indication of, of why it is popularly believed that as science advances, so religion retreats. It is a very uh, popular, and, and it's a very understandable view, I think. One of the problems with it is um, that you can have perfectly natural explanations for events in nature, um, but without actually challenging the idea that behind those natural events, there is still some uh, transcendent power at work, mm. uh, originally perhaps as a creator or subsequently as a sustainer 
of those processes. And then if you recognize that, the story becomes more complicated.